This is meeting two of criminal law. The importance of our focusing on the defined criminal offense should become clearer as we look at the case of People v. Zakowitz, a New York case from the 1930s. The opinion we read reverses Zakowitz's conviction for first-degree murder. The case is remanded to the lower court for a new trial. The issue the defendant raises on his appeal has to do with the admission of certain physical evidence at trial over the defendant's objection. To understand what is going on, we need to bring on board a bit of evidence law. Evidence is a separate course in the curriculum. I will only be scratching the surface of evidence law. In Zakowitz, the evidence in question was the defendant's gun collection. When he was arrested, the defendant told the police that he and his wife had been walking back to their apartment when the victim insulted her. Once they were back inside their apartment, she told the defendant the exact vulgar words the victim used. The defendant armed himself and returned to the street. An argument with the victim led to a fatal shooting. At trial, Zakowitz told a slightly different story. Testifying in his defense, he said that he had been armed the whole time. The prosecution introduced evidence that police discovered several other weapons in the Zakowitz apartment, including another pistol and a tear gas gun. This is the evidence that the defendant argues the trial court erred in admitting. The basic principle of evidence law is that only relevant evidence is admissible. A fact offered in evidence is relevant just in case it is probative of some material fact. Proffered evidence is probative of a fact just in case the fact is likelier to be true given the evidence than it would be without the evidence. To be probative of a fact, proffered evidence does not have to make that fact highly likely. Proffered evidence can be probative even though it makes a fact tiny, a tiny bit likelier. Materiality is the other component of relevance. Proffered evidence is relevant only if it is probative of a material fact. The Zakowitz opinion states, the materiality requirement means that the first prerequisite for determining the relevancy and hence the admissibility of evidence is a command of the substantive law of crimes. The substantive law of crimes is our subject, not evidence, not criminal procedure. We need one more bit of evidence law. All relevant evidence is admissible unless it is excluded. The law of evidence deems some types of evidence better excluded even though they are probative. Evidence law calls for the exclusion of, for example, coerced confessions, many kinds of hearsay testimony, illegally seized evidence, testimony from a spouse or lawyer, and so forth. Not our subject. Now, the evidence in dispute in Zakowitz was that the defendant had three other handguns and a tear gas gun in his apartment. The prosecution argued on appeal that the proffered evidence was relevant to show that the defendant had a murderous propensity. The court takes this to mean that the prosecution wanted to introduce evidence about the defendant's character. Owning guns might not seem very probative of that, but suppose for a moment that the prosecution had proffered a defendant's prior conviction for aggravated assault. It would not be admissible either, because character is never an issue. That is, character is not material. It is not a crime to have a bad character. As we will see, only bad acts are punishable as crimes. 
But isn't a person who has, say, snatched purses on prior occasions likelier to have done, as, done so as charged? Isn't character probative? The Zakowitz court answers. The natural and inevitable tendency is to give excessive weight to a vicious record. Juries are believed to do a poor job of handling certain types of facts. Even though they are instructed that their job is to determine whether the defendant committed a certain defined criminal offense on the occasion charged, jurors are liable to be biased against defendants shown to be bad characters. Character is never an issue. No, never. Hardly ever. Character is never an issue unless the defendant chooses to make it one. How might the defendant do that? By testifying. The veracity of a witness is always subject to cross-examination. Under cross-examination, the defendant can be asked to admit prior bad acts. Here's a question. Should the left-at-home weapons be admissible on retrial? The prosecution argued that the other gun's evidence was admissible to prove that Zachowicz had a murderous propensity. The appellate court rejected that argument. The character of the defendant is not material. That leaves untouched the question whether the other guns might be probative of some truly material fact, such as whether the defendant deliberated before the killing. As we will see in greater detail later in the semester, premeditation is what distinguishes first-degree murder from other types of homicide. At retrial, the prosecution can argue that the defendant's deliberation is shown by the evidence that he picked out a lethal weapon when he had a non-lethal weapon that he could have taken back to the street for self-protection. Whether the jury buys that or not, we need not say. The lesson we take from Zakowitz is the importance of focusing on the defined criminal offense. The defined criminal offense determines what is and is not a material fact. That, in turn, determines what can be admitted into evidence at trial. The substantive criminal law, the study of how criminal offenses are defined, is our subject.